All right, let's roll up our sleeves and tackle this algebraic riddle together. The equation we're working with is x squared minus 144 equal to y squared. Our task? To find four integer pairs, yes, integers, of x and y that satisfy this equation. Sounds simple, right? Well, not so fast. The catch is that both x and y must be integers, and that's where the real fun and challenge begins. It's like trying to find matching socks in a drawer full of almost right but not quite pairs, frustrating yet oddly satisfying when you succeed. Now, if we could just pick any real numbers, this would be a breeze. You'd simply grab a number z greater than 144, declare it as x squared, and boom, you find that x is squared root of z and y is the squared root of z minus 144. Easy peasy. For example, if z is 146 then x is squared root of 146 and y is square root of 2. Repeat this process for z equals 147, z equals 148 and z equals 149 and voila. You've cracked the case with a casual shrug and a smug grin. But alas, life and math isn't always so kind. Numbers rarely play by our rules, and equations don't always yield easy answers. This particular riddle is no exception, it's part of an entry exam to the math faculty, crafted to challenge even the sharpest minds. Here's the catch, we're not allowed to step into the elegant, mysterious world of square roots unless they resolve perfectly into integers. No decimals, no approximations, just clean, whole numbers. It's a rule that turns this seemingly simple puzzle into a true test of logic, persistence, and mathematical creativity. Got an idea for the answer? Don't be shy, drop it in the comments right now. Whether it's a stroke of genius or a completely off-the-wall guess, I'd love to see what you come up with. After all, this isn't just about solving a math problem, it's about diving headfirst into the thrill of discovery, untangling a web of numbers that feels like it has a mind of its own, and savoring the joy of tracking down those elusive integer pairs like a mathematical Sherlock Holmes. So, grab your thinking cap, or your lucky socks, whatever works, sharpen those wits, and get ready for a rewarding hunt. And hey, no pressure, if you can't find all the integer pairs, that's totally fine. Even part of the answer is better than nothing. After all, every small victory counts, and who doesn't love the satisfaction of a good number puzzle? Plus, let's be honest, if you've made it this far, you're already cooler than the average person who runs screaming at the sight of a square root. So, what do we have here? An equation of the form x squared minus number equal to y squared. Hmm, does that ring a bell? Think carefully, what kind of mathematical identity involves squares of numbers? If the first thing that popped into your head was the Pythagorean identity, congratulations. You're already on the right track. This equation has all the hallmarks of something we can transform into a more familiar form, something that feels like an old friend to anyone who's ever dabbled in middle school math. Yes, I'm talking about the Pythagorean identity. This timeless classic, a cornerstone of trigonometry and algebra alike, is the foundation of so many mathematical adventures, and we're about to put it to good use here. To start, let's move the 144 to the other side of the equation. By doing this, we rewrite the equation as y squared plus 144 equals x squared. Now we're starting to see the resemblance to the Pythagorean identity, where something squared plus something equal to something squared. It's like reconnecting with an old friend in a new context. But, hold your horses, it's not quite there yet. Let's zoom in on the 144. A quick mental math sprint, or a little help from our trusty calculator sidekick, reveals that the square root of 144 is 12. Yep, you heard that right, 12. It's one of those numbers that math geeks have stamped in their brains from day one and it's always a little victory when it shows up in a problem like this. So, if we swap out 144 for 12 squared, we get the Pythagorean identity in all its mathy glory. Surprise! The equation was Pythagorean identity in disguise. We cracked the code.
Let's pop the hood on 12 and see what's inside, spoiler alert, it's just 3 and 4 teaming up like the ultimate math power couple. Picture this, 3 brings the charm, 4 brings the muscle, and together they make 12 look like a piece of cake. One multiplies, the other conquers, and voila, we've cracked the code. But why, you ask? Because this breakdown is the key to uncovering the legendary Pythagorean triple. And let's be honest, who wouldn't want to unlock a bit of mathematical fame? Now, buckle up for a journey into the world of Pythagorean triples, a hidden gem of math that's both simple and fascinating. A Pythagorean triple is a set of three positive integers, let's call them A, B, and C, that satisfy the iconic Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus B squared equal to C squared. This equation is the holy grail of right triangles, the secret sauce behind so many geometric wonders. Here's the cool part, if A, B and C are Pythagorean triple, the A squared plus B squared equal to C squared, then swiping the terms in left side will give B squared plus A squared equal to C squared, which mean that B, A and C is also Pythagorean triple. But wait, we're not here for duplicates, this isn't math's version of a rerun. To keep things tidy, we add a simple rule, we will say the canonical Pythagorean triple is where it is less than B. After all, numbers cannot argue over who's smaller, it's math, not a reality TV show. With this rule in place, we've got a clean and efficient way to explore the beauty of Pythagorean triples. Ready to dig deeper? Let's go. You've probably come across the rock star of Pythagorean triples, 3, 4, and 5, it's like the Beyonce of math, everyone knows it, and it's always in the spotlight. Why is it so famous? Let's break it down, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16 and when you add those together, you get 25 which is 5 squared. Boom. It all checks out. Is it magic? Not quite. It's just math doing what math does best, being brilliant and blowing our minds. Okay, let's see another property of Pythagorean triple. If A, B, and C form a Pythagorean triple, then so do Ka, KB, and KC for any positive integer K. It's like a math party where everyone's invited. Want proof? Let's roll up our sleeves and see it in action. Hold on tight. So if A, B and C form a Pythagorean triple, it means that a squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now, we know that the triple key A, key B and key C is also triple of integers since each component in the triple is product of two integers. Now show that key A squared plus K B squared is equal to key C squared. So, we've squared up 3 times 4, and since 3 and 4 are part of the famous Pythagorean triple, 3, the 4, 5, we've got two options for k, it can be 3 or 4. First up, we scale the triple by 4, so we get the new triple, 4 times 3, 4 times 4, and 4 times 5, or 12, 16, and 20. Let's see it in action, 20 squared minus 144 equals 256 which equals 16 squared. Looking good, right? Now, for the second choice, let's switch it up and make 4 RB and KR3. That gives us the triple, 3 times 3, 3 times 4, and 3 times 5, or 9, 12, and 15. Let's check this one out, 15 squared minus 144 equals 81, which equals 9 squared. Boom! It works again. Two Pythagorean triples, both showing off their math magic. Pretty neat, huh? Oh, we've found that x equals 20 and y equals 16 is the first solution, and x equals 15 and y equals 9 is the second. But how do we get two more solutions? Do we need to hunt down every Pythagorean triple with 12 components? Well, buckle up, because that's not exactly a walk in the park, it's more like a marathon through a math jungle. But fear not, there's a nifty property of Pythagorean triples we can use to save the day. Time to bring out the math superhero. We'll follow the identity that every Pythagorean triple can be expressed as m squared minus n squared, 2 times m times n, and m squared plus n squared, where m and n are integers. 
Yes, you heard that right. If you want me to dive deeper into this identity and break it down like, subscribe to channel now. I'm planning to make a tutorial about this identity with action, drama, and lots of math. So stay tuned. So, if we want the second component to be 12, we need the product of m and n to be 6. There are two options for that, 1 is 6 times 1, which gives us the triple, 6 squared minus 1 squared equal to 35, 12, 6 squared plus 1 squared equal to 37. Let's check it out, 37 squared minus 144 equals 1,225, which equals 35 squared. Looking good. Now, the second option is 2 times 3, and this gives us the Pythagorean triple, 3 squared minus 2 squared equal 5, 12, 3 squared plus 2 squared equal 13. So, we get x equals 13 and y equals 5. Let's test it, 13 squared minus 144 equals 25, which equals 5 squared. Boom! It works! Two more Pythagorean triples, both proving that math isn't just about numbers, it's about finding patterns, making connections, and having a little fun along the way. Now, let's compare the first component to 12. We start with the equation m squared minus n squared equals 12, which factors as m plus n times m minus n equals 12. Now, let's look at the factor pairs of 12, 12 and 1, 6 and 2, and 4 and 3. We want m to be greater than n, so we'll check each pair. Case 1, if m plus n equals 12 and m minus n equals 1, adding these gives us 2m equals 13, so m equals 13 divided by 2, which is 6.5. Since m isn't an integer, this case doesn't work. Case 2, if m plus n equals 6 and m minus n equals 2, adding these gives us 2m equals 8. So m equals 8 divided by 2, which is 4, and then n equals 2. This gives us the triple 12, 16, and 20, so y equals 20 and x equals 16. This is a valid solution. But we already find Tice's solution. Case 3. If m plus n equals 4 and m minus n equals 3, adding these gives us 2m equals 7, so m equals 7 divided by 2, which is 3.5. Since m isn't an integer, this case doesn't work either. So, we've found all the possible solutions. Let's order them by the first component, x from the smallest to the biggest. First pair is x equals 13 and y equals 5. Second pair is x equals 15 and y equals 9. Third pair is x equals 20 and y equals 16. Fourth pair is x equals 37 and y equals 35. We've successfully found all the pairs. What do you think? Was it an easy question? Did you find the pairs easily before going through our step-by-step -step solution? If you have any comments or questions, leave them below. And don't forget to subscribe for more questions like this.